this is just a quick update to the situation going on with the Mythos Pack right now. As of three days ago, my former brother, Death Hamilton, caused a situation in which he is no longer a part of the pack. That is him, as you can see I'm highlighting in the map, that is him sitting there in a little corner of the property where he's the only spot where he's not banned is where the rental box is. Now he's been sitting there for the last few minutes. I feel kind of bad for him. I really do. Because I, at this point, I don't think there's really anywhere else he can really go. He doesn't have a lot of Second Life friends. This is the only Second Life family that he really has left. And he uh, burnt that bridge as of last night. He burnt that final bridge with me. Three days ago, we got into a prank war with each other, pushing each other, orbiting each other into the air. And it was, at the time, it was fun. It was, we were joking around. And he upped the ante, and he took it too far. He started trying to crash me. But what he was using was a sim crasher, which will, of course, those who play Second Life know that will knock out a whole sim for a few minutes and throw everybody off of Second Life. Now, when he started that, I got after him. I got pissed off. I started yelling at him. And I'm, but he uh, never responded. And when he didn't respond, I got upset, took off for the night. The following day was uh, a class day for our bloodlines, our for our clan. It was a few minutes before class was going to start when he showed up. We started joking around a little bit, talking. And he wanted to, he brought up the subject of what happened the night before. And he refused to admit that maybe it was wrong of him to use a sim crasher. And he accused me of using a crasher when I did not use one. I was simply pushing him around messing around with him, shooting him up in the air like I normally do with, with people when I'm joking around, when I'm just joking around. And he took it to a whole new level with Sim Crasher. That was really messed up on his part. And I tried to show him that it was messed up on his part to do that because we have, this is not, we don't own this whole sim like we have in the past have owned large portions of a sim. This sim we only own a very small portion. And there is an active club next door and the night that he was trying to crash it, there was about maybe 20, 30 people, between 20 to 30 people in that club. And then there was the neighbors behind us were in, in their house. And the last thing I need is to be thrown out of this place. Last thing I need is to be thrown out of this place because I really like this land here. Me and Beth have just set up. We have gotten everything almost to where we like it. And we've been here for about a month and a half, and <laughs> it's uh, way better than our last place that we were at for about half a year. We, 
I really want to keep this place. So I tried to tell him it wasn't a good idea to keep using a crasher. And he just, all he wanted to do was brag and say, I won the fight, I won the fight, ha ha ha. And he was, my point was not getting across to him that he shouldn't be using crashers, that that's going too far. And I will admit, I got upset, and I ejected him from the classroom. Now, he knows from the past that when I eject somebody off of, the, off of my property, half the time it's because I'm joking around, the other time it's because I'm upset. Or there's a legitimate reason that I feel that there's a, a threat to the family and I'll eject them. I was half kidding and half upset when I ejected him, but I did not ban him off of the land. And what happens is when you, you get ejected, you land over here on this little spot where he is currently sitting, where he has this account of his has been sitting there for the last three days he uh, logs it in every now and then and uh, he uh, just logged it in a few minutes ago after I made some uh, posts in uh, Facebook about the situation and that's what's going on today now he had a chance to apologize for his bad behavior he did Instead, what he did was he began to grief me during a Bloodlines class. Uh, and that class, which is scheduled to uh, be, uh, I had to cut the class short. How, I, hell, I only got into one item of the uh, agenda that day. And the class is rescheduled for later this afternoon, which I will have to reteach, and hopefully nothing happens. And hopefully Bethy will be here to help me out with that and make sure that it, that nobody interrupts this time. What he did was he had a HUD that allows them to send out fake messages, and he kept sending out fake airstrip messages to me. And at first, I thought, ha ha ha, funny. But I thought I was the only one seeing them. Well, actually, at first, it, it, he actually did fool me. I thought I had a legitimate problem with my uh, one of my Bloodlines items. And as I tried to fix it, I began to realize, you know, when I took the item off and the problem continued... I began to realize that it wasn't the item and that it was somebody griefing me and sure enough I looked I looked on the map and death was sitting over here in the corner and he brought on his main account and was causing oh well, at the time I was pretty sure he was causing the situation and one of my second life daughters Sammy was there and she had a, a way of checking scripts and seeing who is running what scripts and she eyed me and sure enough it was death on his main account pulling it so I cut class short and uh, quote unquote Savannah was up in the showed up in the classroom watching all the chaos unfold and the class were tell <laughs> I had to cut the class short because this error script message was not being sent only just to me. It was being broadcast in local, so everybody was seeing it. And it was distracting the class. Everybody was uh, not paying attention any longer to the lesson, but what instead was the, um, distraction of this error message it became too much so I cut class short 
and I decided that I was going to reschedule it, and I also made it clear by saying a couple of times in local chat that if death didn't stop, he would be reprimanded. I would take it up with Beth, and he would be reprimanded. Now, Savannah was sitting there and hearing all of this, and I'm pretty sure Death got that message that it was not cool what he was pulling off, that we had a class going. And I logged out to try and stop this error message just in case it wasn't him. And as soon as I returned, I changed my avatar, changed everything I was wearing. And within a few seconds of being back on, the messages started up again. And that's when uh, Sammy eyed me and told me that it was death doing it. So again, I issued another warning, the final warning, and it continued. It continued until I logged out. Upset again, I logged out. And I did not return for several hours. When I did return for when I did return, all of a sudden as it seemed as soon as I logged in, Death hops into family chat and starts telling everybody he's leaving the clan, and it just claiming that he never goes anywhere, which he doesn't. I mean, every time I logged in in the la since he's returned, since he returned to the family, every time I logged in, he was here on the land. He never went anywhere else. He was here when I logged in. Usually he was still here when I logged out. But that was his own choice. He didn't leave the land, and that was on his own choice. I mean, I don't think he really has anywhere else to go other than uh, messing around at a couple of places like Freebie Galaxy, or I don't know if, he's, uh, if he went off and messed around in Bloodlines either, but he was always here. Nobody forced him to be here. Nobody asked him to be here all the time. He was just here. So, for him to claim that he wanted to go other places and the family was preventing him from going other places was kind of a little fucked up. And I did get upset. And I made it clear to the family in chat, which I probably should have backed off, I probably shouldn't have done anything, but I was so aggravated with what happened in the classroom a couple hours prior that I did lose my temper and I did say some things and I did make it, make it clear that the reason why he was leaving was not because of any of him not being allowed to go anywhere, him not being allowed to do anything, it was because he griefed the class and he was not wanting to be reprimanded for it. And uh, during the conversation, somebody brought up the subject and said, suggested that maybe it was a girl involved and it just seemed like death clung to this idea it was not his original idea obviously and he clung to it and that just pissed me off even more and I don't even know why I don't know why I went after him in family chat I don't know why my temper was just flared at that point it was just completely flared, and there was no stopping me at that point, I don't think.
but I did go after him. I did make it clear to the family that he was leaving because he was afraid of being reprimanded for his actions of griefing the classroom. And that there was indeed a Bloodlines class going on when he griefed us. Now, I thought that was the end of it. And when I got up in the morning the following day, because I logged out yet again upset and people were telling me to chill and I decided to take advice and just log out and chill. In the morning I saw that indeed he left the, he left the pack again. So I chose to take all of his accounts and move them down from full family member to just friend accounts. And I thought that would be the end of it. And I left it at that. I spent the day off and on Second Life. I was, my account was left on. I logged, I kept myself logged in. I did a few things, went and talked to some friends, I went to talk to some other clan friends that uh, called me over and they needed some help and they needed some, uh, one needed some help, one needed some, uh, needed to resolve an issue between, between family members and another was they were reporting back to me about some situations that were going on with uh, people ripping off family ripping off their family members and warning me to look out for certain people and I was like okay I got that handled came back left my left myself logged in at my house and I decided to um, basically play some video games watch some movies watch a little YouTube and just mess around you know just trying to spend the day waiting around waiting around for Bethy to get on and when I decided to check back at Second Life I was getting ready to do some landscaping on the land and the next thing I know Sammy's eyeing me that a Savannah was telling her that I was such a horrible evil person and sharing some uh, sharing information about me and the pack and I asked her what and she started telling me well Savannah's going around telling everybody that you banned and muted her for no reason and I was like no I haven't banned or muted anybody I turned I turned um, certain accounts that were linked to death to be just pack friends but nobody was banned off the land nobody was muted or otherwise done anything else other than just being busted down to not well being demoted down to just a family friend because they because they were no longer in the pack they chose to leave and I chose to respect that they left but at the same time it's standard it's just standard for us to demote people down to pack friend once they leave so I I'm Savannah and told her that no 
You were not banned. You were not muted. You were only demoted down. You were demoted down to a pack friend. And uh, actually, honestly, most of the time when somebody leaves the pack, me and Beth, if we think there's going to be problems, or if there has been problems with certain people that leave the pack, we throw them out of the pack group. So this was a little unusual, this was a little unorthodox that I l allowed them to remain in the pack group as a pack friend. But I told her that, you know, you're still in the group, you're just demoted to just a friend of the family. And she became belligerent. And she continued on. And she took what I was telling her. She took the message, the private message. She took it and began sharing it around on Second Life. She began, she began going to other family members. Going down the list of the group. And, and just spamming my, spamming my message with her to everybody that she could find online at the time and some who weren't even online I started getting messages left and right I put out a warning in family group not to listen to Savannah not to trust her and that she is just out causing problems just causing drama just for the sake of causing drama which it was And I started getting emails, I started getting IMs from everybody that they were messaging because they wanted to know what was going on and they trusted, they trusted me over this person that they never really, none of them, half of them never really met. Half of them didn't even know who this person was, they didn't know who Savannah was, they didn't know what she was even talking about. They didn't even know who Death was because he had been he had been gone for two years and he had been gone because he caused the situation two years ago within the family that was a lot of drama him and his wife at the time and his wife caused a lot of problems, a lot of drama, and had a lot of made of all false accusations about Beth. And I didn't appreciate that and when they left, they caused drama by posting the whole and by posting everything that went on, they posted it in all the family groups and they posted it in the club groups. They posted it to people who had no fucking business knowing what was going on. They just wanted to reach out and cry to everybody that they possibly could just because they could. Just because they wanted to tear the family apart, which is what he's trying to do yet again. This is why I'm so... I'm so this is why I'm so upset with him, and this is why I do not want to call him my brother ever again. And he's always had this weird fascination with me, in which he's always said that he's my best friend, he's my best brother, and all this other stuff, which is not true. He was a good friend, he was a close friend, but my best friend my best brother ever is Kiros aka Tyf who some of y'all who uh, who may have kept uh, kept up with ROL Studios throughout the years have known that me and Tyf aka Kiros have been bros since 1998 we have been doing comics we have been doing stories we've been doing and making products here in Second Life and now making these videos that's my true spiritual brother 
that is my true SL blood brother. He is my true best friend, my true bestest brother ever. He's the one that I depend on. He's the he's my go-to bro. And he always will be and always <laughs> there's nobody that's going to replace him, especially not death ever. And as for y'all may be seen y'all may have seen him in the videos wild card wild card I have known for a shorter time than I have known death and he is just fucking awesome he is just another brother that I have a high regard a high respect for because he shows that he cares about what's going on he respects me he doesn't pull his bullshit on me that death does and that's why I am not going to talk to death as much as possible anymore if I have to issue him warnings this is the only time I will talk to him ever again like right now, I mean, I know most likely he's sitting over in that corner right now because it's just to irritate me. Just to irritate me and in hopes that maybe family members will walk by and he'll talk to them or he'll see who's, uh, who's on the land. He'll try to eye people, trying to share this, try, try to share this conversation I had with quote unquote of Savannah I am pretty sure what I know what he is up to by sitting over in that little corner acting all dejected and stuff because he is banned he is now banned off the land he cannot get over here any longer and he is no longer welcomed here for his actions Now, I was hoping to make this just a quick blog and a vlog and just be done with it, but it's this has gone over uh this video right now is almost 30 minutes long. I really don't know what else to do at this point because he is really pissing me off. And I feel stupid for having trusted him again. I feel stupid for having to let him back into the family. And I'm just really tired of his bullshit right now. As far as things go, I really don't want anything else to do with death. I really don't. I just want him to go away at this point. To go away and not come back. Because he hit his lowest point last night when he attempted to turn Beth against me. And that is something I will never forgive him for. And I told her the truth on some of the stuff that he's been doing and some of, his, some of the things he's been saying. As such in... And uh, this is just to illustrate the kind of person he is. I had a minor argument with Beth back when he came back to the family. And this was about Easter time. It was a very minor argument. And she logged out for the night, and well, after she logged out, we were talking. And he told me, you know what? You're only married to her on second life. You're not stuck with her for your, the rest of your life. You should go out and have sex with somebody else if she's going to be a bitch. 
now. I was shocked that he said this. And I'm pretty much paraphrasing on the bitch part because he didn't say, he didn't actually literally say bitch, but it was what he was implying. And... I told him that's not me. I'm not that kind of person. And he said, well, Second Life's here for us to enjoy. Second Life is part of the fantasy, so if you get on an avatar, if you get on an alt, it's not you, it's your alt. You're playing as somebody else, and you can go and have sex with whoever you want and not get caught and not feel guilty about it. You shouldn't feel guilty about it because it's second life. It's not real. I agree that second life is not real life. I agree on that. Because it's not. Because real life should take priority over second life. But, however, I do consider my relationship with Beth to be a legitimate relationship and I would not cheat on her I would not do anything to hurt her because I love her and I told him there was no way in hell I would seriously take that advice because it's just not who I am I don't do those things it's not me Before Beth, I did have a time in my life where I did, I did get involved with open relationships, and it was something I couldn't handle. I couldn't handle it because I know the kind of person I am now is that I'm a very jealous person. I'm a very angry person, and I could not handle having a girlfriend that would go out and sleep with everybody and I could not handle going out and sleeping with other women at the same time that I was with this girl and it just wasn't me I left that lifestyle because it was not me I went back to Second Life and I found Beth. Well, my Second Life mother, Mama Pammy, set me and Bethy up. And I won't regret that and I won't do anything to harm it. I won't do anything to harm her. And that advice was some of the worst files. I had ever gotten from somebody. All of this from my so-called brother over there who's still standing in the corner. And I, mean, I don't really know what else to say or what to do at this point. Other than kick him out of my life again. Concentrate on me and Beth and the rest of the family. Because that's the kind of person we're dealing with over there. This is the kind of person and their advice and the life they choose to live. And if he has no remorse for what he has done, if he has no remorse for what he has done in the past, what he has done now, and what he's continuing to do, I cannot call him my brother ever again. 
that's over and done with. This is Ace Rags Raghilda, aka Ace Bravato, signing out.